get started. Uh, I believe I already got the share up there for you, but if not, we've got it up there now. So what we want to talk about is the uh, fuel injection and how it, you know, really, you know, made things a lot better as far as fuel economy and fuel injection. But I want to give you kind of a basic understanding of how it all works. So uh, it uses, you know, the power constraint module. That was one of the things that needed to happen. We needed to get computers and cars before we could actually get it going. Now, uh, please understand, I'm not going to be talking about mechanical fuel injection, but I can if, if you want me to put a video on that also. But it's uh, really dependent on uh, inputs and uh, feedback. And this is one of the things that was, you know, the advantage of bringing uh, computers into cars. Without that, we really wouldn't have the the mileage that we have nowadays. There's other things too, but this is one of the helps going on. So we use a uh, electronic fuel uh, a pump in it. We also have, you know, the pump is, you know, usually has a, a relay to it to control it because it takes quite a bit of uh, current to go through and keep that pump moving. And then we have a pressure regulator, uh, depending on the system, it'll be on the, uh, the rail, the fuel injection rail, or it may be in the fuel tank. It's a diaphragm type one that you know, allows it to allow so much pressure and then regulate it back. And then of course we have the fuel injection, uh, fuel injection nozzles, or sometimes you just call them nozzles. Uh, most uh, fuel injector uh, systems use the computer to control, uh, you know, pulsing uh, fuel injection on and off, and also uh, operating the fuel pump relay circuit. So here is a diagram of a fuel pump, you know, fuel pump you know, uh, circuit. You know, I was going to say assembly, but a circuit. So we start at the fuel tank, and here we have an in-tank fuel pump. Uh, some of them, uh, some of the models actually had a two-stage pump. We had a you know, pickup uh, type pump, you know, and then we had a pressure pump on the rail, uh, the actual fuel line here, and then uh, we have a filtering mechanism, which we also have a filter down below, taking up some of the bigger stuff. And then we get it more finely uh, cleaned or you know, filtered out because we do not want any kind of debris underneath the nozzles or anything like that because that can actually damage the nozzles too. So we go into the fuel injection rail assembly and then our fuel injectors going on all electronically controlled to the PCM. And then we have our fuel pressure regulator on this particular one is back controlled and we can have it different and controlled by different ways. And then any, any kind of return, in other words, over the pressure we needed, we can actually bring it on back through the train, train line and then put it back in the fuel uh, pump and tank itself. So here is early, uh, we had throttle bodies, we have, uh, uh, this one is a dual th nozzle throttle body. So we had a couple assemblies. This is the fuel injectors that would be built into the throttle body assembly. And it was serviceable. And this particular one was on a five liter Chevrolet type motor or GM. So, so typically the uh, fuel uh, injectors were right behind the intake valve and the airflow would come in. So we would just bring in air. We wouldn't do like the old carburetors, bringing air from uh, throttle by, uh, bring it in through the throttle assembly and bring it on that way. Now, this is on port uh, fuel injection. On the throttle body assemblies, we did mix uh, you know, the fuel and air through the throttle body assembly itself. Now, this is what we call it early on is electronic carburetor. Uh, now, there was, I'll talk more about electronic carburetors, where we actually took regular carburetors, but some of uh, some of the techniques would call this just a electronic carburetor because it would just do pretty much the same thing, but a different way of doing it. So typically, uh, we... We are now into uh, pretty much all the vehicles that are on the road, We're in, except for a few outliers. 
but we have a direct injection. Now, direct injection gets the fuel you know, into the actual combustion chamber. Instead of putting it behind the intake valve, we actually put it right into the combustion chamber itself. And then, uh, you know, of course, the, you know, we have two types of fuel um, programming. Let's put it that way, the computer programming, put it on there. We have a speed density fuel injection system where we use the speed of the engine and the load to figure out how much fuel we need to put in to the uh, turn the ejector on and off at. So, you know, we would use like the RPM signal and also we'd use the, uh, the we would use the RPM signal and also use like a map sensor to see what kind of load value we had inside the engine itself. So this was really a way we did, you know, early, early on it was very dependent on speed density. And then we have the mass airflow systems which pretty much every vehicle has a mass airflow on it nowadays. And we would actually use more of a how much air is coming in. We may still have a map sensor on it. Of course, we still have speed sensors, but we would actually pulse that actually ejector depending on how many, how much uh, airflow would come in, how many grams per second, gram pounds per you know a minute would actually put in there. So here we have you know, the old and, and uh, throttle body type system where we have it actually spring loaded for the pressure regular on it. Here's my injector right over here. And then we you know, actually bring the fuel in and then depending on the uh, actual, how much you know, load value we had, we would actually inject it through the nozzle itself. And the throttle body injection, the computer controlled it. It's, uh, we could have a synchronized uh, you know, type of systems where it would pulse one another or we would in inject uh, both of them at the same time. We could use that if we had more of a need for more fuel too. And non-synchronized injectors pulse once, you know, like I said before, during a given period. And then we, uh, when we went into more of the port fuel injection, electronic fuel injection systems, we, we, it would actually inject it right behind the intake manifold, which helped a lot on how much fuel we're going. And remember, you know, the uh, throttle body still had that obstacle about the intake manifolds. Um, they may be a little bit higher rise, but still, they would have that pulling effect down at the bottom of the intake, which we could have a rich mixture coming on. We, it wasn't as much as the carburetors, but it still had that kind of problem that we had. And with the fuel injection, we could just put it right, you know, the port injection systems, and we could put them right behind the intake manifold, um, intake valve, and we just bring it what it needed like that. So injectors receive the fuel uh, and, and are supported by the actual fuel rail itself. So we would have that coming across and we, we had things to keep down noise like dampeners and all that too. Injectors, this is a cross section of fuel injector. It's a solenoid, basically it has a, a needle uh, to it, the little pendle or the, you know, you know they sometimes you know, call it a needle valve to where it would open up and close. And these were very calibrated. Uh, so if you're doing any kind of modifications to your engine, uh, bigger valves or whatever, uh, you would have to think about uh, what size injectors I need on it too. So this was very precise to the engine. So when the manufacturer made that engine, it knew this is the injector I need to put into this particular engine to make it uh, actually run properly. So again, it was electronically controlled. So we would actually have a, a, a little coil winding that would allow it to pull, use magnetism to actually move that uh, needle off the seat to allow fuel to be actually pumped in to the cylinder. And then, you know, uh, there again, I'm just showing you another one of actually how, you know, we, we did it on the actual port you know, and also the synchronized type systems. 
Uh, this is a uh, intake runners, and you notice the intakes changed quite a bit because of fuel injection, which we could actually do some really progressive intakes, and there was different staged intakes also out there. And we tuned the injector uh, to actually the intakes to the injection system too. So fuel pressure regulators, you know, typically uh, they were a vac uh, vacuum spring loaded. Um, we can get into electronically controlled ones too, uh, but it would maintain enough fuel to support all the injectors and all the, the cylinders. And that was another advantage over carburation too, because the runners, uh, depending on how they ran the intake manifold, uh, some of the runners would be farther out. Uh, and then we would have um, not a balanced amount of fuel. The center uh, runners would get uh, a major portion of the fuel, whereas the outer so runners would may have a little less fuel, where with fuel injection, we can pour, uh, put it right behind the intake valves, or if we want to port, we need to have it right into the cylinder itself. So we can actually more precisely adjust how much fuel per each cylinder. So a typical fuel injection uh, system, it was vacuum control. So we had a vacuum uh, line that went into the uh, manifold source, and we can uh, we would change the amount of fuel depending on the load value. So as the vacuum in the intake went down, that would actually allow more fuel to go into the injectors, and we can actually adjust that. One of the downsides of that is if that uh, diaphragm ruptured, which we did have uh, problems with that, um, but it would actually allow uh, fuel to come pulled up through that vacuum hose and you would have a strange condition and where you can find out where all the fuel source is coming through. Take that vacuum hose off, look inside of it, and you start seeing fuel pulled up inside of it. You've either got a leaking or leak uh, or a, a, a diaphragm that's got a tear in it. And depending on how much vacuum we can uh, apply to it, we actually we can actually uh, block off the return or we can add more into the return depending on the value. So again, like I said before, uh, depending on how much. So uh, many port injection systems use a vacuum controlled uh, pressure inside the tank uh, intake manifold changes as load uh, engine to keep increases. Uh, the electronic returnless systems, um, they, they actually had to where they were just one line going out and the pressure regular uh, rail actually sensed how much pressure it needed. And then the transistor sends a low uh, level signal to the computer. And then the, uh, the, and the controller calculates how a signal to the pump driver and it allows it to actually spin up or spin down depending on how much of the load it needs. So here's a, 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 a returnless system. And you know, of course we still have the filter but it would be controlled by the actual PCM. So the PCM would set a signal and say, okay, we need more fuel. And then it would have a sensor. You know, here we have two sensors right here and that feed into the computer to make it work. So mechanical fuel injections, I'm, I'm gonna put another uh, uh, program together on that. So I'm gonna stop right here. So uh, we'll get into more of it as we go along. And this is just, I want to kind of segment these so that uh, you can actually absorb it and then come back and get the next video. All right, that's it for now. So we'll talk to you really soon. If you liked what you've seen and you'd like to have more, uh, just leave it down in the comments. Please like and subscribe and, and make sure that uh, I know that, you, that this helps me on what I produce and put up into uh, YouTube. All right, uh, bye for now. Thank you.